Mr. Feibel, thank you very much for coming. I'm just curious to know a bit more about you and also your life before Siemens. So a little bit of a potted history quickly around your career leading up to you joining the business, if you don't mind. Yes, uh, it's my pleasure. I'm, uh, as a background, I'm an electrical engineer and then uh, passed the European uh, examination as a patent attorney, did the German qualification as patent attorney and have since always been working in industry. First of all, I started with ABB in Switzerland. Then I left ABB for a Swiss-German group of companies called George Fisher, where I restructured the IP department. And then they called me back for ABB Switzerland, where I took over the lead of the IP department. And then in 2007, I was nominated as chief IP counsel for ABB Limited worldwide. And since 2013, I'm now working for Siemens as Chief IP Counsel. What brought you here? It was, in particular, it was the challenge to lead one of the biggest, if not the biggest, industrial IP department in the world. And Siemens has really a very, very nice tradition in terms of patents. As you probably know, Werner von Siemens was an inventor himself. And uh, patents and IP enjoy a, a lot of um, understanding in, in, in Siemens. And that was, yeah, that's great for me to get this job. It's a huge challenge on, in many respects. Is that what appealed? Of course, uh, because it's huge. It's huge in terms of numbers. It's huge in terms of staff. Uh, we're talking about... In total, as Siemens as a group of companies, we're talking about nearly 500 people that work for IP. And in terms of numbers of patent filings, we have a portfolio of over 100,000 granted patents and pending patent applications. Year by year, we uh, file uh, 3,700 to 4,000 new patent applications. So that's really a huge challenge to to deal with a very complex challenge yes it is complex because i personally feel that the importance of ip in a digital world becomes uh, more and more important and uh, ip rights maybe have a little bit changed their role where in former times it was more a uh, Daniel Dusentrieb uh, approach of inventions where you invented something really basic. Now it's more a contribution to a digital ecosystem and to, sh to make sure that you can protect your share and your competitive advantage in this field. Tell me a little bit more about the goal that you're moving towards? What, what is the, what's the plan? What's your strategy? The strategy of uh, IP for Siemens is what we call to create values for the businesses of Siemens. So we call our strategy value-driven IP strategy. That means we would like to harvest the inventions and to protect them in by IP rights so that they are able to create value for the company. And that's, of course, a big challenge, and that's a difference to what I call an invention-driven IP policy or IP strategy, where the patent attorneys, so to speak, wait for inventors to have good ideas, and then they take the ideas and protect them by IP rights. I would like to have a much more uh, proactive interactive approach where the patent attorneys go out, integrate themselves into the innovation process, talk to the researchers, to the developer, and harvest and grasp the ideas that have, understand what the business model of the business is, understand where the uh, competitive advantages are, and then actively place valuable IP rights on these sweet spots. And by that, I would like to increase the value we create for the business with such IP rights. Is this part of the drive towards a quality-driven strategy over quantity? 
Exactly. That's exactly the main point of uh, quality versus quantity strategy. It doesn't really create any value whether you have thousands of patents or whether you have one single much very valuable patent. And that's what I'm striving for. Can you just give me a sense of what might be the consequences if you don't get this right, if you don't overcome these challenges? What impact might that have on, on the business? Then we just pile up patents where at the end uh, I have to say there's not really value in it and we have high maintenance cost and uh, we cannot add value to the business by protecting our competitive advantage. But we just pile up patents, thousands of patents, and that's not worthwhile the money. But what might be the consequence to the business if that continues, or that was the case? Then, uh, I mean, they have high costs. And then they cannot protect their competitive advantage and that's the challenge and to, to protect the competitive advantage you must understand what the how the business model works where the USPs are and then you must interlink that and place your IP rights exactly on this part and in order to do that we also need to have a tool to measure quality and to measure quality of patent portfolios. So how did you do this job before PatentSight came along? Yeah, actually, it's not like this, so to speak. I introduced PatentSight quite uh, or just a few years or a few months after I started working for, for Siemens because my predecessor had a clear volume strategy. We were regularly number one and number two in European patent filings. But coming from a competitor, to be very honest, I had a high impression of the volume of Siemens patent portfolio, but not so much of the quality of the patent portfolio. And therefore, I thought we need to use, introduce a measure and a tool to measure the quality of the patent portfolio because only what you measure will be improved. And in that respect, patent site helped us a lot. There are some specific features of patent site which convinced me that it, it's a, a good solution to measure quality. One really important aspect is that patent site came out of a university. So it has an, an academic objective background. It's not just a commercial background as many other tools and many other applications have. So patent side has this academic uh, background, which was quite important for me. Then, as I mentioned, it's important not to look at the absolute figure of a quality index right at the moment. It's more important to see how you develop and how you develop in particular vis-a-vis -vis your competition. And that also is offered by patent side because they have the a possibility to, to show the development on a comparable basis, meaning patent site invests a lot on um, investigating and monitoring how companies change in terms of acquisitions and divestitures, etc. And that can, of course, influence the value of your portfolio dramatically, because if you acquire a company or if you divest a part of your company, then your then your numbers are immediately affected, and patent site is able to monitor the patent quality on a comparable basis. So they take these changes into account, and very closely monitor how companies develop, how they consist, what parts go in, what parts go out. So that was also very important for me. And then in, the ter in terms of the 
indexes that the patent site uses to measure quality. And there are also differences how patents are cited in the US, how patents are cited in Germany, how patents are cited in China, for example. And patent site also takes these, chain, these differences into considerations and adapts the uh, indexes uh, accordingly. And by that, you get as far as possible an ob objective measure of the quality of your patent portfolio. How did you validate that patent site was correct with its metrics? Did you challenge them? Of course, we challenged them by cross-checking whether the, the patents that we feel internally are our most valuable, whether they also score high in, in patent site. And the same we did for our competitions, our competitors' patents, where we selected a few really high impact patents and then cross-checked whether they also have a high quality index in patent site. And there was quite a good match. Can you talk me through the early experiences then once you decided to bring patent site on board? What were the first steps? How did you begin the process of change? So we first introduced our change in the strategy and then we were looking for a tool that could accompany and give us the measure to, or the, a tool that measures whether our change in strategy is successful. So that was kind of the sequence. I was lucky that the managing board trusted me and trusted the patent side tool that it is objective and that we can increase our uh, quality index by harvesting more valuable inventions and by creating broader and more important patents. So, and in order to see this effect, it took some time, I have to say maybe two years, where we really could see that after the introduction of our value-driven strategy that the quality indexes measured by patent side went dramatically up and then I felt quite relieved, I have to say. Can you tell me a little bit more about the relationship with the patent site team and just describe to me what that has been like? The relation with the patent site team is great, I have to say, because we also had our own understanding of how a tool should work, what we need, what, what our needs are for a tool, what changes we, we need. And uh, all these requests, change requests, etc., have always been uh, very well received and very well worked on in the course of the time that we're using PatentSite. And in what way did PatentSite mirror your strategy of going, moving towards um, quality over quantity? Just a few words around that. I mean, the Measuring the quality of a patent is really a very tricky thing because at the end you have to say the quality of a patent is measured in court, but only 5% at max go to the court or litigated. So you need to have a, let's call it indirect measure of the quality of a patent and the patent site offered a, a great approach and a reliable and objective approach to measure the quality of single and of a whole portfolio of patents. So did this quality strategy and the development of the IP portfolio lead to a better return on investment? Yes, indeed. I think we have a better return on investment on our IP rights. Maybe not so much in terms of pure money, license income, but in terms of uh, broader um, exploitation and commercialization of our IP rights by using them for joint ventures, by using them to get new orders, etc. And these secondary effects are probably much more important and that we indeed can measure 
because uh, exploitation has become one of the three pillars of our strategy.